Tommy's gonna taste the gin so that you don't have to Let you save your money, yeah, that's what Tommy wants Minimal dilution, cause we wanna taste the gins But if the gins are bad, then we will throw them in the bin Now let's send it over to Tommy, who is gonna taste? He's gonna get on rowdy and shout up the place Hello, guten Tag, and welcome back to Tommy Taste, the channel where I taste the gin so that you don't have to. This week there'll be no funny names on this channel whatsoever, as I try Dick und Stein Gin. Does it come from Germany? No, wrong. It comes from the southern, slightly less sausage-munching neighbour that is Austria, land of the Golden Eagle. Original guys, another eagle country in Central Europe. This Dick und Stein Gin is the true European gin, as it likes to call itself. Why is it the true European gin? Because it compiles a variety of different botanicals, 23 to be precise, different botanicals from all around Europe. Why is it called Dickenstein? Because they're the last names of the two collaborators that sought to make this gin and make their vision of the best gin in Europe come true. And that's what we're going to be tasting to find out today. Things I already like about this gin. It is not chill filtered. This means that a lot of those essential oils from the botanicals are kept within the gin and it makes for a more full mouthed, wonderful, oily experience that I f***ing love about gin. And although we haven't reviewed it on this channel, Cotswolds gin is by far and away the best non-chill filtered gin. Other things I like about this, 45.7%. Incredibly specific, probably specific for the reason that this was the perfect percent. So whoever distilled this really knew what they were doing when they made it. 23 botanicals is my main concern. Given that German gins have this horrible tendency of throw any old in their mantra, has it got ribeye steak? No, then add some. Has it got salmon fillet in there? No, then add some. This does have a bit of that kind of convoluted botanical. So amongst the 23, you've got the typical juniper botanicals, followed by things like lemon, limes, pine. But then it goes much more complex with the botanicals that it has. Whoa, coming up in first place, we've got verbena. That's verbena there, everyone. Follow up there by dandelion. Oh, that's a good one, dandelion. And then we're moving on to wild strawberry, making its third appearance there. Followed by whatever these are, Alpine Gentians. It's all a bit contradictory. So hopefully, although it gives this European flavor, hopefully it's going to be something that's actually palatable, you know? Because going back to things like Creative Vilgin, which I tried on this channel, which was a mouthful of 65 botanicals or whatever, tasted like ass. Hopefully this does not feel the same. I'm not going to say much more about it other than the name again, Dick und Stein. Let's crack it in a glass and have a little taste. My dick is big, my dick is very big, my dick is big, it's big, my dick is very big. So there we have my dick, nothing funny about that, und Stein in a glass. Let's get our nose in there and have a little whiff. I really, really like the nose on this gin. It's quite mild, it's quite reserved, I think it's best to say. You get the kind of classic citrusy flavors coming out first. So the lemon and the limes make themselves apparent. Then you've got things like orange as well. But there's really nice floral and herbal aromas. I can't say that it's overly spicy, but I do get just like a touch of ginger in there as well. Also, you do get the classic kind of pine forest aromas of things like the pine and the juniper that go in there. Can't say I'm getting the strawberry, but that's not too much of a surprise, nor is it too much of a problem. Let's taste! My dick's so big, it lives next door. My dick's so big, that all I want is fuck the world. So I really, really like the palette on this gin. There is an intensely long finish. Like, 
I could smoke a pack of 20 Rothmans and I think I would still get that finish cutting through. It's really junipery on the finish and I really, really love that. Not getting the strawberries, but it is like verbena heavy, the citrus is there, the ginger is really nice and spicy and it's warming, it keeps warming as you go through. It's a really mature palette that you don't really get from a lot of gins in this area. I've tried countless German gins on this channel and we've spoken about like the German gin revolution, but most of them boil down to, are they a little bit sweet or are they a little bit gimmicky? And this one is neither sweet nor gimmicky. There's nice sweet like citrus, flavors that come off it, but it is a mature classic style of gin, but with nice kind of spicy floral complexities. Now for the fun part with a non-chill filtered gin. Let's get just a little bit of ice in there and see how that kind of cloudy non-chill filtered gin is going to taste on ice. Hopefully wonderful. My dick's so big it can be bad. It will be our president. The ice sets this gin on a completely different course. I loved this when it was neat, but on the ice, it is just so good. It feels so oily, it feels like unctuous. Mm, get her using big words. Mm. It's really full bodied. The juniper is there way more than it was. It feels like a really serious gin now. It has that verbena that really kicks in. It's just everything that comes around is really good. You get all of the botanicals, real same as nose experience, but just so much better, so much more mature. Splash a tonic in there. Let's see if we can find those strawberries. It's so rare that I get a gin on this channel that actually tastes better as you dilute it. And with the tonic, this just tastes great. It's a super serious, super pleasant gin. And guess what? Hint of strawberry on the finish, which is really nice, really fruity, really aromatic, complex, earthy. It's great. Honestly, this is one of the best gins I have tried on this channel. And it is unbelievable to think that this is a real small batch distillery coming from Austria. I love this gin. So the easy thing to say is that Dickenstein is an absolute banger. It has loads of dick and it is making me rock hard in that Stein fashion. This is phenomenal. You possibly will struggle to find this gin in the UK. You won't struggle so much to find it in Central Europe. So Germany, Austria, Switzerland, it's not going to be too hard. It is pricey, coming in at around 42.50 euros for a 500 milliliter bottle. However, I can safely say it is one of the best gins to this date that I have tried on this channel. And I am thrilled to have tried something so obscure and so going against the trend of so many gins and proudly leading with the non-chill filtration aspect. I'm not gonna talk about the vertical farming or anything like that, because it bores me to fucking tits, but the way that the botanicals, the sources are super high quality, it's super sustainable, it's just the message of the gin is really, really good. And far better headline grabber for anything Austrian rather than, I don't know, Conchita Verst or uh, Joseph Fritzl. And there we go. No video is complete with mentioning Austria until you've mentioned Joseph Fritzl. I'm really sorry, Conchita Verst, that I used you in the same sentence as Fritzl. <gasps> Dickenstein! Dick, 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 dick. Oh, you like and subscribe, girl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like and subscribe. What? 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 Like and subscribe. Uh huh, uh huh. What did I?